In this presentation, a tibial shaft fracture will be stabilized with different external fixator frame constructs to allow the assessment of stability. A note to practical directors. This exercise should be done using an intact tibia bone model. Depending on the expertise of the participants, a transverse mid-shaft fracture should be added to the bone either after the frame constructs have been applied or, if the participants are more advanced, before the application of the frame constructs. The objectives of the exercise are to understand the clinical indications for the application of the large external fixator, the correct position and insertion of the shant screws, the construction of different frame types, and the choice of frame type according to the stability required. The most important indications for the external fixator include fractures with severe soft tissue damage, either open or closed, including tibial, diaphysis and intra-articular fractures, damage control surgery in polytrauma patients, and acute and chronic infections in fractures and non-unions. An anteromedial position is recommended for the placement of the uniplanar external fixator. The shant screws must be placed in the same plane and in the safe zones. Here they are shown in position with the fracture reduced. In general, these shant screws should be placed medial to the tibial crest. This placement is particularly important in the distal tibia to avoid interference with the tendons and neurovascular bundle. The position of the frame should not interfere with access to the wound for the initial debridement. In this single rod construction, the shant screws are placed in the far, far position. The rod is placed 7 cm from the bone and secured with four large open self-holding clamps. The implants and instruments needed for this exercise are the power tool, the quick coupling, the drive adapter with quick coupling for 5mm shant screws, and four 175mm long, 5mm diameter self drilling shant screws with a thread length of 60mm. Conventional shant screws may be used as well. The cannulated universal chuck with T handle may also be used to advance the shant screws. For the construction of the uniplanar single rod frame, one 300mm long, 11mm diameter carbon fibre rod, and four large open self holding clamps are needed. Also needed are the handle for drill sleeves, the long 8.0 6.0 drill sleeve with thread, the long 6.0, 5.0 drill sleeve with thread, the long 5.0, 3.5 drill sleeve, and the long 3.5 trocar. The drill sleeve handle with six positions can also be used. To tighten the clamps, the 11mm cannulated socket wrench and the 11mm combination wrench are used. The tibia is secured in the clamp with the fracture provisionally reduced. When using this frame type, the limb must be aligned before the application of the frame. The 8.0 6.0 drill sleeve is screwed into the handle. Followed by the 6.0 5.0 drill sleeve. The 5.0, 3.5 drill sleeve is inserted. And finally, the 3.5 trocar is inserted. After a stab incision is made, the drill sleeve assembly is inserted through the incision and placed directly on the bone surface. The trocar is removed. As self-drilling shant screws are used, the drill sleeve is also removed. The adapter for shant screws is mounted in the quick coupling. 
a shunt screw is inserted into the adapter. The shunt screw is advanced until the tip is anchored in the far cortex. In the clinical situation, irrigation is recommended. Once the shunt screw has been placed, it is released from the adapter and the drill sleeve assembly is removed. The second shunt screw is inserted in the distal fragment. It must be positioned in the same plane as the first. The image intensifier is used to check the final position of the shunt screws. The large, open, self-holding clamps connect a carbon fibre rod to the shunt screws. The clamps are first tightened to the shunt screws by hand. The carbon fibre rod is clicked into the clamps. The socket wrench is used to tighten the clamp. The correct limb alignment is verified using the image intensifier before final tightening. Tightening is completed with the combination wrench. Two additional clamps are attached to the carbon fibre rod. The clamps are placed midway between the fracture line and the inserted shant screws. The drill sleeve assembly without the outer sleeve is clicked into the clamp. Tighten the clamp by hand to secure the assembly in place and remove the trocar and drill sleeve. The shant screw is advanced until the drill tip is anchored in the far cortex. Once the shant screw has been placed, it is released from the adapter and the drill sleeve is removed. The clamp is tightened with the wrenches. The procedure is repeated to insert the second shant screw in the distal fragment, and all clamps are fully tightened. In this single rod construction, the shant screws are placed in the near far position. The rod is placed 7 cm from the bone and secured with four large open self holding clamps. In this single rod construction, Three shant screws are placed on either side of the fracture. The rod is placed 7 cm from the bone and secured with six large open self holding clamps. In this single rod construction, the shant screws are placed in the near far position. The rod is placed 3 cm from the bone and secured with four large open self holding clamps. In this triangulated construction, the shant screws are placed in a V shape. The rods are placed 7 cm from the bone, and each rod is secured with four large open self holding clamps. Extra stability is provided by mounting two connecting bars, each secured with two large open self holding clamps. In this double rod construction, the shant screws are placed in the far, far position. The rods are each secured with four large open self holding clamps. Dynamization is possible by loosening the upper two distal clamps and the lower two proximal clamps. This presentation has demonstrated.
the clinical indications for the application of the large external fixator, the correct position and insertion of the shant screws, the construction of different frame types, and the choice of frame type with reference to the desired stability and dynamization requirements. It has been shown that the surgeon's choice of frame construct can have an influence on the stability achieved.